not only to fight, but to win. Albeit a defensive fight, but nonetheless it was a victory. And likewise, a couple of hundred miles from London, uh, mainly white male workers employed by Leeds City Council to collect the city's rubbish have actually won a victory. After 11 weeks of indefinite strike action, they actually secured more or less their current pay and conditions after the majority of them were threatened with pay cuts of up to £5,000. 11 weeks on strike it took, but they won. And I think at the moment we face two problems. Because in the media there is this widespread assumption that is pumped out day in, day out, that we are back to the days of Margaret Thatcher, i.e. there is no alternative. No alternative to massive public sector cuts. No alternative to pay freezes, in reality, pay cuts for public sector workers in order to pay the ginormous bill for the bailout of the banks and financial institutions which we've witnessed since the failure of Northern Rock and especially since the collapse of Lehman Brothers in New York and Canary Wharf in September last year. Well, this resolution is stating that there is actually a rather simple alternative. It isn't revolutionary, it's actually a modest tweaking of the tax system to dramatically reduce avoidance, to actually eliminate tax havens, and to tax those who are on six-figure incomes more, whilst actually reducing the tax burden on the poorest 10% of society. If you look at Alistair Darling's budget yesterday, which is, according to both the Liberal Democrats and the Tories, extremely mild medicine, that actually involves for nearly four million public sector workers the reality of more pay cuts over the next two years. And quite frankly, if you look at the not so fine print, job losses, closures of public sector facilities over a long period of time beyond 2010-11. Whoever wins the next general election is promising that there is worse to come for the public sector workforce, but not merely the workforce for those communities we seek to serve. So it's absolutely vital, in my view, and I trust it's a view you share, that we be prepared to fight. To fight locally, not alone simply as Cameron Unison members, but to the maximum degree possible alongside other trade unionists, particularly other public sector trade unionists, service users, council tenants, NHS support groups, etc. We're already seeing in the health service between 600 and 900 million pounds in cuts contemplated for North Central London. What does that mean concretely? Amongst other things, the closure of the accident and emergency department at the Whittington Hospital. 100 million in cuts at the Royal Free Hospital. And that would appear to be the tip of the iceberg. Yet if you've seen the Camden New Journal, by the way, Fine chocolates have been sent to staff at those facilities in order to entice them to, uh, to participate in a consultation exercise, the purpose of which seems to be to sing the praises of senior management <laughs> in these organisations. And speaking of senior management, John alluded to a decision by chief officers in the council to award themselves what appears to have been a combined total of £170,000 in bonuses. At the same time, we have witnessed over the course of the better and cheaper program in this council approximately 180 redundancies. And we have been told quite clearly that we are going to see more, many more, over the coming period. Originally, if you looked on Camden Essentials, the internet, 44 million pounds was the figure quoted for cuts. That was in early November. By the time the report reached the executive, on the 18th of November, the medium-term financial forecast said over three financial years, at least £59 million pounds in cuts. And I received an email from a member this morning in the Culture and Environment Directorate saying that she had been told at a staff briefing £65 million pounds in cuts. So week by week, we've seen increases. And we know that middle managers are being asked to draw up scenarios of 20% cuts. There's no way. Cuts on that scale can be implemented without large-scale job losses. 
And I've mentioned earlier, we have it in good authority that there is a real threat to our contractual working week. I think it's only a matter of time before more threats are made and attempts are made to implement them to other conditions that we've historically enjoyed in this authority. It's happening across the public sector, it's not peculiar to Camden, but what is unusual in Camden is that this is an authority with estimated reserves in excess of £100 million. Even in terms of the logic of this system, a system which I've spent my whole adult life trying to overthrow, I hasten to add, it is a situation where these cuts are unnecessary. And they are driven by a combination of ideology and an attempt to, in my view, fundamentally change the shape of this society, where we see the continuing erosion that began in the mid to late 1970s of the welfare state and the marginalization of trade unions as anything other than represent people at disciplinaries and grievances. That is a situation that I, as a branch secretary, am not prepared to tolerate, a situation I am prepared to fight against. The message needs to go out from this meeting today that all of you are prepared to fight against it. That means encouraging your fellow workers to join Camden Unison. That means having some very difficult arguments about why we may need to sacrifice. Sacrifice by going on the picket line. Sacrifice a day's pay or a week's pay in order to have jobs and services in a year's time, in five years' time. To quote Shelley very loosely, we are many, they are few, you are potential lions. Please let us all arise from our slumbers, go out and beat back the attacks that we are going to witness from this point onwards and actually fashion this trade union and our trade union into a vehicle for achieving a much, much better society for all of us.